Before I start telling the story that I that I have in mind, I um, I'll give you a little, just a little, a prelude. It's really nice to be included in a, a group of storytellers, and for me, it's especially nice because when I was in high school and college, I I wouldn't even have been able to get this far in telling the story because I had. Um, well, did you see the King's Speech, the film The King's Speech? Mm -hmm. I stuttered a lot and stammered. And in that film, the king had the world's best help to help him make his speech. I didn't really have any help. So in high school and in and, and college, I doing this scared the living hell out of me. So I didn't do it. And if I had to... I would be making you so uncomfortable that you would beg for me to stop <laughs> because I was so uncomfortable. And the way I got through it was, well, I, I fell in love with the ocean and I began to study sea turtles. And I just wanted to tell everybody about sea turtles. and. I figured if I couldn't speak, I couldn't tell anybody about what I loved. So I started offering turtle lectures <laughs> to anybody who would care to suffer through them. I bring my my slide carousel with my tur my turtle slides. Remember slide carousels? Maybe some yeah, yeah. most of you do. <laughs> and I'd show up and I'd give my half an hour talk, and it would be painful. And I did that for for years, so ki to kindergartners or um, dive shops or anybody who would suffer through my turtle talks, I called them. <laughs> and I got better at speaking. And then one day somebody said, you know, you're a good speaker. And I just re I remember saying, what? are you talking about? <laughs> so you're a really good speaker. You should do more of that. And I said, oh, that, that was the day that I knew that I'd gotten to cross the line, I guess. And I was, I'm still very nervous about public speaking, but I'm better at it. And I can put my ideas together and share stories about the things that I love. And that's why we're here today. Um, I want to share um, one particular story about Adelita and I met Adelita in 1992 and she lived in Baja California, Mexico and they said that she was originally from Japan but nobody really knew exactly where she was from and she had beautiful brown skin and dark eyes and you couldn't help but be attracted to her so we spent some time together and um, from 1992 till 1996 we spent every summer together in Baja California, Mexico and I became very very fond of her and I don't really know if she was fond of me at all <laughs> um, but in 1996 we knew that it was time for her to go and it was kind of tough to admit it, but she knew it, and I knew it. And the way I knew it was that she was hanging out next to the Western Wall in the room that she lived in all the time, leaning her head on the wall. And I would just sit and watch her and talk to her and say, Adelita, you... You really want to go, don't you? So, what you usually do when you say goodbye to a loved one, you glue a transmitter to her back. Because <laughs> you want to know everything she does for the rest of your life. It's very important. <laughs> so, I loaded her up in the truck, and we drove over to the Pacific coast of Baja, um, many hundreds of miles straight south of where we're standing right now on a beach kind of like this and got together with some Mexican fishermen friends 
and we glued a transmitter that's about the size of your cell phone, glued it to her, her back and put her in the boat and lift, lifted her into the boat and took her, it felt like a million miles offshore. I think it was about two miles, but it, it was just one of those days where I wasn't looking forward to releasing her into the world, but I knew we had to do it. And we lifted her up and gently placed her over the side of the boat into the water. Then she slipped away under the water. And we all waved goodbye and we didn't know where Adelita was going from there. So we turned the boat back to the shore, went back to the beach, and the first thing I did is I asked my friend Bob, who is the underwater video guy, to pull the camera out of the housing, and I wanted to see the videotape of her swimming away underwater. And I looked at it, and she swam about 10 meters, and then she stopped. She stopped moving. And she just drifted. And it looked like she was thinking about coming back. <laughs> and then she decided not to. And she kept swimming. And she swam off into the distance, and the sight of her just faded in, into the ocean. And I watched that tape, I rewound it and rewound it and rewound it and rewound it and watched it over and over and over again. And I'd be glad to send you that clip if you'd like to see it. It's quite stunning. Uh, and we went back to our camp. And she had the transmitter on her back, which meant that she wasn't really gone. Well, she was gone, she was in the ocean, but we could still be in touch, at least in one direction. So, <laughs> heartbreaking, isn't it? Um, so, a long distance relationship we had. Uh, <laughs> she sent, or at least her transmitter sent, messages every day, all day long. And they came to me via email. And I plotted them carefully, dutifully, on a map. And I shared that map on something that was brand new called the internet. <laughs> so Adelita became famous on the internet. <laughs> and people around the world watched her make her way across the Pacific Ocean. Day after day, and Dana can attest this, I'd get up early in the morning, <laughs> check my email, plot the map, answer messages from people who wanted to know how Adelita was doing, <laughs> update the website, and she slowly started making a line away from the Baja California Peninsula out into the Pacific Ocean towards Hawaii. And we thought, wow, that, that's interesting. Nobody has ever tracked an animal of any kind across an ocean. And the basic understanding among my colleagues was animals just don't cross the ocean. It's too far. There's no food. It's just not what they do. They either stay there or they stay here and they move around on, on the right side. So Adelita was making her way across the ocean. And every day I'd share the data. And then my colleagues started saying, you can't share the data before you publish it. Somebody will steal it. And I thought about that because I was a graduate student and I thought, wow, that could be bad for my career, I suppose, if somebody stole my data and they didn't give me credit, I guess. But what would somebody do with stolen turtle data? <laughs> Sell it on the black market? Or publish it? Maybe, but doubtful, because, I don't know, just, you need to have a little more than just some dots to get a publication in a journal. Or maybe they would take that data and save turtles with it. That would be okay. Or maybe they take the data and do something 
that I'm not smart enough to know how to do. And that would be okay too. So I came to the, at the time, radical conclusion that sharing the data as wildly and as freely as possible was the absolute right thing to do. And as normal as that may sound to us in this post-Napster world that we live in, and this Facebook, Twitter, Twitter, share everything all the time world that we live in, that was a radical idea. To share anything in real time in 1996 was radical. Truly radical among my peers. Particularly to share data from a sea turtle that you're deeply in love with uh, publicly was just weirdly radical. But that's what I did. I put the data online every single day. And thousands, then tens of thousands, and hundreds of thousands, and soon millions of people tracked Adelita as she swam over the course of 368 days from North America home to where she was born in Japan. 12,000 kilometers later, she arrived along the coast of Japan and started doing some strange things, moving around, and then disappeared, reappeared, and then completely disappeared. And we were all just watching as Adelita made her way home through the garbage, (laughs) past the fishing lines and the fishing nets, between the long liners and the bottom trawlers, around and under and over the plastic, home to Japan. And then her signal disappeared. That's the story of Adelita. Beautiful story.